and gentlemen, how many times have you heard me say, how many times have I said that the news that will affect the election hasn't happened yet? Every time they issued a poll in the past six months, I said, don't pay any attention to it. It doesn't mean anything. The events that will affect the election haven't happened yet. Anybody want to dispute that? Oh, from sunny South Florida, it's Open Line Friday! Where we specialize in perfection. We specialize in pursuing excellence. It is the Rush Limbaugh program. It's the Open Line Friday edition. Now, that just means that when we go to the phones, the callers have even more freedom, latitude, and leeway than they normally do. This program is a benevolent dictatorship when you strip it all down. I run it. I'm a good guy. And I am fair and honest, and I treat everybody who calls this program with uh, utmost respect. But it's also a radio show that we got to keep people listening to, and I can't, I can't allow for things to get boring here. Now, I'm not boring. So that means if there's anything boring on this program, it will be the callers. Can't permit that. So Monday through Thursday, we screen it pretty tightly. That's the thing. On Friday, though, we don't screen it very tightly at all. But pretty much whatever you want to talk about is fair game. And I run that great professional risk, turning the program over to the non-professionals. It's fun. I look forward to it. And we're at it again. 800 282-2882 is the number if you want to be on the program. President Trump and the First Lady Melania Trump announced early this morning that they have both tested positive for COVID-19. I was made aware of this just before 1 a.m. today. And I, in fact, I, it was in two stages. I had been made aware that it was possible and that the president and the first lady had been given tests and the results were being awaited. And it was shortly before 1 a.m. that I found out what the results were. And I have to tell you, folks, I was crushed. You know, it's really strange the emotions that hit you. You learn a lot about yourself, and you learn a lot about what you really think. Of, I mean, the virus has been around here since the beginning of the year, essentially, February, March. And depending on whether or not you know somebody who has contracted it, it, it is dealt with by people in different ways. If you don't know anybody who has come down with COVID-19, you think of it in a certain set of ways. If you know somebody who has, you think of it entirely differently. If you know somebody who has been killed by it, you think of it entirely differently than people who only know of it from a distance. And then you add to all of that what you think of the virus in the first place. Do you think of it as a death sentence if anybody gets it? And a lot of people do. You know, we've run the stories over the course of this past year, discuss them, where something like 30%, is it by getting this right, 30% of the American people, like 9 million Americans believe that everybody who gets COVID-19 dies from it. That's what it was, and it's something like 9 million Americans have died. That's right, 30 30% equals 9 million Americans. It's a, a, a huge, I think it's over half the American people think that, are very close to it. I'd have to look up that story. But the bottom line is the way the virus has been treated in the media, the way it's been reported on, the pictures of boarded up cities and towns, the everything that's happened, the economic downturns as a result, the, the blue state cities and the blue state states that have been kept shut down because of the virus artificially, on purpose, to affect the economy of this country and to make it sluggish to prevent its full-fledged return for political reasons. But however you see this, 
the impression that a lot of Americans have is that this virus is a death sentence. But it isn't. But nevertheless, it, you, you still have the way it's reported, the way we are altering every aspect of American life because of it, you almost have to excuse people thinking that it's a death sentence because it is being treated as such. It's being reported as such day in and day out. Pretty much every public health suggestion, admonition, local city or state requirement is rooted or based on the fact that if you contract this virus, you are in huge, deep, big trouble. Everybody is, according to the way it's reported. So you can't blame people, in a way, for thinking that. But here is, I, I watched Dr. Marty McCary today. He's, uh, he's a brilliant cancer specialist at Johns Hopkins. And he is a regular on Fox News. And he has been talking sense about the the virus and the way it's um, the way it impacts various people and you know what to do uh, to prevent it to keep from getting it. He's really really good. And he said today that Melania Trump, from all of the best kept medical data that we have since the inception of this virus in the United States. She has a 99.9% .9 chance of a full recovery. And then he said that President Trump has a 99% chance of a full recovery. That took me aback because I have been under the belief that President Trump, as somebody who's over 65, uh, by the way, he's not obese. They're trying to say that he's obese, overweight, but he's not that obese. But regardless, they say that he's got demographic characteristics that put him at greater risk for really bad things happening if he contracts the virus. And here's Marty, Dr. McCary, saying, oh, 99% chance of a full recovery. Um, in my case, um, getting COVID would be dire. It's all about whether or not your immune system is firing on all cylinders and whether you can mount some kind of, your body can mount a defense against it. President Trump, I have to tell you, I, I when I heard this at 1 a.m., I was crushed, folks. I was crushed and I've been examining. Why was I crushed? Is it because of what I think about the virus? It's the, it, it, it's the belief system that has evolved in me based on the way the virus has been reported on in the, in the media and independent ways I've informed myself about it. I mean, you'd rather not get it, even though the president has said to have a 99% chance of a full recovery. To me, you know, I, all I could think about, and I'll just share with you the, the rush of emotions that happened instantaneously. I was crushed and I was trying to put myself, okay, President and the First Lady are in the residence of the White House. What are they thinking? How is this impacting them? What really, not, not the public face they're going to put forward, but rather just as human beings, how is this effect how does it affect anybody who gets it but president trump isn't just anybody president of the united states and then i had flash memories of that night in the house chamber on what was it february 4th the state of the union where the president bestowed upon me the presidential medal of freedom and i just I saw this larger-than-life individual prowling at the podium that night, State of the Union, House Chamber, larger-than-life. See, that's the key. 
We're dealing with somebody here, too, all of us. I don't care whether you hate the guy. I don't care whether you think that he is a lying, worthless, morally bankrupt, bad orange man. He is still larger than life. In fact, I would venture to say that if you hate the man, he dominates your life more than people's lives who love him are dominated. You are so obsessed with the guy. Your dislike or your hatred is so consuming that you can't stop thinking about him, and that makes him larger than life. You wouldn't know what to do with him if he weren't here. You wouldn't know what to do with yourself. You have those of you who do not like the bad orange man, those of you who have convinced yourself that every problem you face in life is his fault. What a convenient excuse you've got. Donald Trump is the reason you're A, unhappy, B, miserable, C, have no job, no job prospect, what, whatever. Your reason for not liking the guy, it is all consuming. He is larger than life to people that love him, to people that respect him, to people who have invested the literal hope and future of our country in Trump. He's larger than life. This cannot happen. This cannot be allowed to happen. Whether you love, like, dislike, or hate Donald Trump, the one thing that you know, and you either love this or you hate this, he's invincible. Seems invincible. Imagine, folks, to the American left, and the Democrat Party, they've done everything they know how to destroy Donald Trump. I mean literally destroy. Not just get him thrown out of office. They have tried to destroy his reputation, his family, his life, his past, his future. They've thrown every weapon they have, and they have watched every weapon just bounce off making not even a dent they haven't stopped him they may have slowed down the um, implementation of an agenda but they haven't stopped donald trump to, to, to them whether they want to admit it or not seems invincible particularly health-wise i've known him for a long time never seen him sick never heard of him being sick even with the common cold so knowing what i knew or what i thought i knew about president being in the number one demographic danger zone and this 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 rushing flood of emotions about what must they have felt like when they got the results back? And I know what that is, by the way. Uh, me and my family know what those feelings are when you get a diagnosis. And, and just, you know, some people think COVID-19 is a death sentence. Other people know that it's not. But can't blame either one because, as I say, the way it's been reported will shape the way you, you think about it. And then... When something happens like this to somebody you love, when it, when it happens to you, it's a whole different thing. You deal with it in different ways when it happens to you, when, when it, be it COVID-19 or some other diagnosis. Regardless whether it happens to you or to somebody you know, respect, have immense um, hope invested in, life is precious. We all only get one. And I look at Donald Trump, and if there's ever been anybody who has lived life to the maximum potential, it would have to be Donald Trump. You know, William F. Buckley Jr. was the same way. An incredible life lived, not seemingly a waste